scripture that he will deal with it at a point in time. You just keep doing the will of God. Maybe the Lord is paying you back for something. <laughs> Think about what I'm saying here. Let's go to Malachi 2. <laughs> you know, because sometimes you be done did so much wrong before you got in this word of God, and then even when you get in this word of God, you're doing wrong. Then finally you decide you want to do everything all right. You think the Lord going to forget? Did Paul forget? Did he forget Paul? Paul, he, he, he scourged the church out. He, he put people in prison and jail, and he turned to the Lord with all his heart, didn't he? But the Lord said, hey, I'm going to collect on you. He got beat more than anybody. He got chased more than anybody. Paralysis all over one. Always going through something. Because the Lord said, hey, you're going to go through a lot for me for what you did. And sometimes the Lord, hey, I'm, I'm going to collect, man. That's why I asked the Lord to just to be merciful, Lord. Man, show your mercy. <laughs> and he'll probably tell you like he told Paul, my grace is suffice for you. <laughs> <laughs> you getting this head busted. <laughs> Malachi 2 and 14. Malachi 2 and 14. You know? Malachi 2 and 14. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. Yet ye say, wherefore? Because the Lord have been witness between thee and thy wife. Because the Lord, he's dealing with Judah here. Because, you know, they had started, you know, the Lord, Israel was uh, God's wife. Mm -hmm. And they stopped serving the true and living God and started serving other gods. And the Lord, he didn't want to put them away. He just wanted them to deal treacherously with they want. Because he wasn't dealing treacherously with them. Go ahead and read, though. Yet ye say, wherefore, because the Lord have been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, uh -huh. against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, uh -huh. yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. Because y'all are making a covenant when you marry. Go ahead and read. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit. See, he's talking about that spirit again. That is why he say, how did he say he cleaned up, clean up your marriage? With the word, right? That spirit got to be there. Go ahead and read. And wherefore, one, that he might seek a godly vessel. Because seed. if the man is in the word of God and the woman in the word of God, when they have children, they're going to be in the word of God. Go ahead and read. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. And don't deal treacherously with the wife of your youth. You love her. You cherish her. And you do not put anything before her but God. Yes. You ain't going to do nothing to yourself. Don't do nothing wrong to her. Let's go a little. Keep reading. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away. See, the Lord, he hate putting away. He ain't for that divorce stuff. He do not like putting away. Go ahead and read. For one covereth violence with his garment, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. Because you, you don't know what kind of spirit it is if you're talking about putting your wife away. Mm -hmm. And she just being a woman. You don't deal with her treacherously. Treat her any old way. Go ahead and read. That she deal not treacherously. Go now. Let's go a little further. Let's go to um, Matthew, the 19th chapter. We're going to look at the master here. Because brothers, they, they just try to find any way just lead a woman, you know. Sometimes it's good for your woman to be on your back to keep you straight. Matthew 19, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Matthew 19 and 1. Matthew 19 and 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Ju Judea uh -huh. beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Because Jesus, he was healing everybody. He was doing great works in the Father's name. And the people was following him everywhere he, where he went. He had entourage. Everybody followed him. Everybody just wanted to get close to him. And the Pharisees was always trying to throw some quick move on him. Like he didn't see through that garbage they was pulling. Go ahead and read. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, uh -huh. and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? He said, then they asked the question, Is it lawful to put a man, uh, a wife away for any cause, for anything? Because nowadays, it's prevalent. You know, everybody want to put away their wife for anything. She don't cook. She don't keep the house clean. 
You don't want to get out and work. Amen. Well, you knew that before you married her, didn't you? You stuck. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Uh -huh. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. Everybody saying the same thing. In the old it said, the master said, the apostle said, everybody saying the same thing. When you get married, leave your parents. Go ahead and read. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. Uh -huh. What therefore God have joined together, uh -huh. let not man put asunder. And he said, let not man pull apart. Because you are making a vow before God when you make them vow. God is right there. And he don't plan you separating from them. Go ahead and read. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a written of divorcement? A writing of divorcement. Go ahead. And to put her away. Go ahead. He said unto he them. He don't let them know why Moses did this. Go ahead and read. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. He said in the beginning, it was not so. And if you really read the Old Testament, you don't see too much divorcing going on. You know, you don't see that. You know, when they came back in the land with Ezra and Nehemiah, you know, they made them do away with them, them strange wives. But you don't see divorce too much in there. Because in the beginning, it was not so. Now the disciples are going to say something. Go ahead and read. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. In other words, the only way you can put this woman away is by her going outside that marriage. That is the only way you can do it, is going outside that marriage. And that is the only way. Go ahead and read. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. And, you know, you put out your house, and you decide you don't want to do nothing. But then she go get with another man, she causing him to commit adultery, and she committing adultery. Lord, don't play that. And you're going to pay a price if you do that. Go ahead and read. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, is it not good to marry? <laughs> right away the disciples say, wait a minute. <laughs> if it's like that, man, because, you know, I, I get with a woman. I get tired of her. I want to get rid of her. In that case, then, it ain't good for you to get married. But then the Lord going to explain. Let's go ahead and read. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this same, save they to whom it is given. Go ahead. For there are some eunuchs where which were so born from their mother's womb. You know, you got some brothers that don't, don't want to cohabitate with no woman, decide to be, uh, j just be a eunuch, don't want to deal with no woman. Brothers are born like that. Go ahead and read. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And then you got some that, you know, they, they, they decide to do it, you know, go to the doctor and do it. Go ahead and read. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. And you got sake. some brothers say, forget it. I ain't dealing with no woman. Paul did that. You know, he said, I ain't dealing with no one for the kingdom of God. Because, you know, if you don't have no, no spouse, you don't have to worry about pleasing nobody but God, man. Same with the woman. If you don't have no man, all you got to do is worry about is pleasing God. Go ahead and read. 